Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The full release of FC25 did not really start out with quite the bang that we all hoped that it would. Sure, Road to the Knockouts has brought us some absolutely insane juiced player items, of course, with upgrades to come. We had a great evolution yesterday and even leaks of more good content to come, but when the game literally does not work and annoyingly puts you in a queue for hours and then disconnects you before logging in, it really hurts the vibes. However, we're moving past all that, and so is the market, which went in a very different direction than we thought it was going to go yesterday, guys, because EA didn't chase the bag. They didn't release packs or as many packs as we thought that they would, and these player prices are staying high and other prices are going up on the market, contrary to what we thought we were going to see. But we're going to discuss that today because what's still in store for the market, and especially regarding what's in store for content today on a Saturday. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up, and of course, subscribe if you are new. Now, as we do on these Saturday videos, we've got a lot of content to discuss, and we're going to get through it as fast as possible. We're going to go to objectives for First, just to outline what we had here, new rush objectives, which unfortunately only give us packs, which they're not bad packs. It's very similar to before. You get an 84 double for finishing the whole objective, but there's no season points for this, which is actually, in my opinion, a bit of a bummer. And they didn't add a new rush mode yet. Hopefully that's coming at some point this weekend. We'd love something else, especially that would allow us to use something higher rated than 79 to work on evos to play rush so that's a little unfortunate there but at least is new packs lovely dynamic here for erling holland just all face no uh body anyways to the objectives for yesterday's bro to the knockouts we do have nicholas oda mendy it's not a bad card a thousand sp inside of here pretty easy to get done not a great card but again not bad good with the play styles honestly intercept slide tackle bruiser and jockey for defense aerial and power header as well pretty easy to do in squad battles if you want and then boom there's a card for a club legend for you maybe or maybe a card you can evolve in the future or you know even maybe not that far down the line with those sort of stats so not a bad one there but there's sp involved so it's probably worth doing and we have a very interesting one here in objectives our first ultimate team friendly cup of the year the evo arena which i don't know why it's not showing me what packs you get right now but the packs are decent you have to win 10 matches and play 10 matches in this live foot friendly mode which once again live friendlies are not based on your division rivals rank anymore it's all based on form now the whole point of this mode is to use a in progress or fully evolved player in your starting 11 and i find it kind of odd because you can't actually make progress on evolution players in friendlies if you take a look at literally all of these evos it says you have to be in rush rivals or squad battles that does not include friendlies so if you're playing with your evo players in friendlies you're not going to get any progress for upgrading them. So that seems a little bit weird, but that is at least a couple different packs and our first friendly cup type of game mode of the year that was dropped. So be with that what you will. Maybe worth grinding throughout the week just to get a few wins and a couple extra packs there. Now let's talk objectives where we did have the Diogo Jota. And really, this one didn't deliver, guys. I mean, 4-star, 5-star, we talked about it in yesterday's video. The stat boost here, this is the biggest problem. The stat boost is not as big as some of the other cards in packs. And, like, when I'm saying not as big, like, Diogo Jota got a plus 1 with plus 2s. And he did get plus 5 passing, which is nice. But plus 2s and 3s in other stat categories is very minor compared to some players in the in-team of packs that got plus 7s and 8s. And, like, I think Doku got plus 12 or plus 11 shooting crazy boost there and jota also does not have a play style plus i think i'm looking at this card as if if it had some more of those stats a little bit higher rated boost and it had a play style plus for the price that it is it would make sense and again for these cards with how long it takes them to upgrade guys wow it just takes a very long time and there's gonna be many weeks from now where you're still waiting for your deal with jota upgrade depending on how liverpool play and for the price that this is and the card level that it just is stat wise it just doesn't quite make sense unless you're a liverpool fan jota fan you want to get it done i'm sure his dribbling and his finishing is going to be pretty good he has great play styles he has great in-game stats i just think for the price in this early game this is an sbc that you swerve on because probably a lot of evolution cards that you've already completed maybe your power shot plus evo player is better and will serve you now better 
then this 199,000 coin SBC will. That's just my take there. I think a lot of people are in agreement with that as there's a lot of downvotes on the Jota. Now, other SBCs we had yesterday, the Team of the Week upgrade, which was an 84 rated squad with 185 player. This was that Team of the Week pack that we saw added to the code last night we talked about on the video. There's only 14,000 coins to do, which is 3,000 coins more than a discard in form. This is 100% worth the craft at some point this week, guys. Get it done just for the fun of it, honestly. It's kind of like a gamble pack, but you could get something good. You also could just get a fodder team of the week like I did. I think it's worth crafting, though, 100%. And we also have this RTTK Challenge 1, which is very easy to do for a premium gold pack. Not super crazy pack there, but pretty cheap to do. I would say that's an SBC to get done as well. Now, that's kind of the mid stuff from yesterday's content. Let's talk about the W aspect of content, and that was the brand new Power Surge Evolution, guys. Max 80 overall, max 93 pace, max 86 dribbling, and this evolution is kind of like a stat boost across the board. There are some pace maximums inside of here. As the example here is the Silver Maeda card, who doesn't get any boost to pace. But as you can see, plus four pace in the first level and plus four pace in the second level up to 85. There are some nuts multi-evo combinations that you can now make with this new power surge evo this joe gomez is probably one of the biggest you might see his card atop footbin almost extinct he's basically extinct right now 400 coins away from being max at 5.2k joe gomez is going to be remembered as one of the crazy evo cards for how many great combinations he's had so far at the beginning of fc 25 samba parloello has got a crazy one here too intro to stat limits power surge and then into the power shot plus evo and this Endrick as well. I don't even think this is the best version of Endrick. If you do intro to stat limits, then power surge, then the ultimate edition, you actually get an 84 rated Endrick instead of an 82. But that card, of course, Endrick's like 10,000 coins. He's going up a lot in value. There are so many good cards that include this power surge Evo. But one of the things you're going to notice with this is the chains. Guys, I haven't done any of these evolutions yet, and I know it may seem like I'm a little behind in that, and my team is maybe even lacking because of it, but this is now what you can create, and maybe this is the way to go forward with evos. We've always talked about waiting with evolutions to see what comes out and what chains you could create, and with more evos dropping so often in this game every couple days, especially on the weekends, right? I think it is now more than ever worth it to wait a couple days, maybe even a week before starting an evolution just to see what player you might get in your team, what player you might pack that you could combine and do Evo combinations with to create some really nuts cards. Like, that's really what I'm noticing here. Now I've got a couple players on my watch list. Depending on what Evo were to come out today from my club, I would love to boost them up. They would go boom straight in my team. But yeah, I love this Power Surge Evo. I love that it's free. It's not that many games. Uh, play two, play two, and win two. So pretty easy to get done there. And yeah, that's a W Evo in my opinion, to be completely honest. Now, going back from the W's to the L's, as, before we get into talking about the Road to the Knockouts team, this was the biggest issue yesterday, right? It was the servers. And right at content drop yesterday, I guess this started happening. I was able to stay on the game for a long time, but I know so many people were getting this screen. Ignore this part of the bottom. This part of the bottom here is completely banter. It's fake. It's not actually real. It was edited up um, by a graphic designer on Twitter. But the queue guys that we saw this at the end of fc24 and we thought wow this is weird but we didn't realize it was going to be such a big thing at the beginning now of fc25 yesterday on launch day with everybody trying to get in the game my goodness the servers were chalked like there was at one point so many of us on stream that were just not even able to get in the game and it was so frustrating so frustrating man and it's a problem that even happened at the end of fc24 during footies the servers are having problems so i guess that's a good sign that a lot of people were on the game which is i guess great but it's most deflating when you go to get on the game that you play for fun we enjoy for the football we enjoy for everything that it has inside of it and then you can't even get on the game and that's the really really disappointing part so Hopefully the servers are better. They better not go down today. This better not be a recurring thing. Hopefully it's just a one-time thing. But uh, that was definitely the biggest problem with Road to the Knockouts yesterday, and it left a lot of people not even want to play. Like they're like, "Wow, I can't log on. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna back back out, not play the game." and hop off. So hopefully today there's no issues with that, and especially heading into this week, first week of Ultimate Team being fully released. Yeah, just the servers. Please work. EA, upgrade them. Whatever you got to do, like, we got to fix this, man. Every single year, sure, maybe for a little bit, servers go down for like 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 
30 max, but like multiple hours of probably millions of people not being able to log in or having troubles with that. I don't know. They've, I'm sure they got the metrics and I'm sure they, they saw it, but the servers, I don't know. We got to figure something out there because that was really frustrating and it's probably going to continue to happen on promo Fridays here at the beginning stages of the game when there's a lot of hype still for this game. Now let's talk about the team that is in packs, this road to the knockout squad, because as we saw yesterday with the leaks and it was confirmed with this team being released, holy smokes, did EA really juice these cards. Honestly, guys, I just tweeted about this a couple hours ago. Did they juice them too much? I understand why they juiced Julian Alvarez from an 84. Actually, I don't. 84 to a 90 is crazy. I understand why they juice these cards up a decent amount, but that much is unreal. By the way, plus six overall, and he got plus six in two stat categories, plus twos and threes and others. That's not a 90 rated card to me. This should be like an 88. So that overall rating, I think, is a bit inflated. But like this Doku, plus 7, plus 11 shooting, plus 9 physical, and plus 7 passing. Like, these are insane boosts. Now, I have to think that part of the reason is because these cards are going to be live all the way until the end of December. That's got to be part of it. Even though some of the clubs are going to be knocked out of contention for that top spot. So maybe they'll get their upgrades within, I don't know, maybe two months or so or a month at least they'll hit that first upgrade just crazy though crazy how big of a boost these guys got which is definitely making their prices pretty inflated alvarez is a mil doku is a million as well bellingham's two five which i don't think is too crazy but then some of the other cards in here i think frimpong and diani are both overpriced at the moment with no play style pluses both like 800k Cherokee, I think, is a little overpriced although i used him and he was very good in game claudia pina i think is overpriced as well but overall this team it's not a bad team. Like Donny Van de Beek, awesome cheap card. Um, Koch, this card right here, insane center back card. Sesco looks cracked as well. A little bit overpriced, I would imagine. Noah Lang, five star skills, fun card to try. Not a bad team. It's just, I think we're still a little bit shell shocked by how juiced these cards are. And especially when you compare like the Jota, how not juiced the Jota is. The thing though that we're still not liking about these is that the upgrade path takes forever with these cards um it's gonna be forever until we have the opportunity to see some of them upgrade at least a couple of months uh for them to play four league matches we played two we had this or played one we had the second set of league matches this upcoming week so nobody's gonna get any upgrades all they can do right now is progress towards that third win and towards the scoring one goal in four different league matches so still gonna be a while before we get upgrades we have a team two of this promo as well, which we'll talk about at the end of the video in terms of leaks. But yeah, the upgrade path just takes a long time, but the cards are juiced. So at least for right now, it looks interesting. And I will say in terms of these prices, and this kind of leads us into what we're talking about with the market today. These are rare. I think one of the reasons that Diani from Pong and some of these other cards are a little overpriced at the moment is because they are mad rare. EA did not drop a lot of tradable supply yesterday. That makes me want to be very careful about owning some of the middle tier of this team of these cards. I think they're probably susceptible to some price drops today and especially tomorrow on Sunday with the rivals reward supply. Sorry, squad that reward supply. It's going to be coming in. So that's one thing I do want to mention. Now let's talk market guys and talk about it for the reasons why it didn't go like we thought it was going to. Guys, yesterday we expected price drops because EA dropping packs in the store that would supply the market with these new promo cards and everything like that. And all the packs that EA dropped yesterday, except for our two 25 and 45K packs, which have been here now for the last week since the early access drop were untradeable. The RTTK week one training pack, the RTTK week one foundations pack, they didn't bother to drop a 50K pack or a 100K pack. I'm not talking about lightning rounds. I'm just talking about how they did it last year. Like we mentioned in the videos leading up to yesterday, how EA dropped tradable packs in the store even midway through the day to like bring more supply to the market. That did not happen at all. So instead of prices dropping on some of those cards that a lot of you guys were looking to buy for teams, stuff actually started to rebound. And I wouldn't say the market flew because it really wasn't, right? The market yesterday was honestly pretty flat and like there wasn't a lot of market content, to be honest. You did have a drop at content. You started here, right? We had a nice rise into content like we were thinking. We sold some of those low tier cards like Kingsley Coman. That was a great investment. Stuff like that in the low tier went up good. Content came around. We had a drop, a little bit of a rebound, drop again, and then we ended up right back here. The market yesterday was between like 88 and 90 points on the index. And right now we're at 88 points on the index again. It was a relatively flat day. Things that did go to plan were the low rated cards, 
went down further. You know, you're talking your lower rated, like you see the Akanji, 84, down to 4,000 coins. Kolomani, 82. He went from, he's 3,000 coins. Wasn't he like 5K? Yesterday, he was 4.4K. Thursday, he was 5,000 coins. But he uh, is down in value. You've got Konate that's down. Yorente is down. A lot of those lower tier, lower than 80 rated, or even Yudogi's down, right? That's the stuff that we expected to drop, and that happened. But the stuff that went up was those players that a lot of you guys were looking to buy for teams. Alexia Puteas. We're talking higher rated cards. Since people saw there was no pack supply yesterday, and the content itself was decent, but like the SBC wasn't amazing. The cards and packs, pretty rare. In like, you know, interesting to buy and stuff like that. People want to try them out. But Puteas went from 500k all the way up to now almost 600,000 coins. And that's a pretty extreme example. Most cards aren't up that much. Most cards... Are up like this Salah, right? Salah was 260, 270, dropping down from where he was at 290, and he's now back up at 290, 300k. So it's not like the market soared yesterday without the tradable supply that we thought we were going to have. It just kind of it stepped up in in a matter of thinking it of in that way. Like Phil Foden still 120,000 coins, not a big rise there. Griezmann still 100,000 coins. Sam Kerr still there. Musiala, 98k. Some cards are up a little bit more than others, but it's not like the market absolutely soared. It's like the market just started to go up because people saw that there was not much supply and they went out and bought cards. Same thing with like the team of the week cards. Messi was 199k. He's now 215. That's not a big rise, right? Rodman's up 20k. Not a big rise. Most of these team of the week one cards barely moved. Team of the week two cards uh, actually went up a little bit because there was not that much supply, which is very rare for a promo Friday that your impacts team of the week goes up but it was just kind of the combination of people having coins and a lot of us being ready to go to buy players i was ready to buy players yesterday wait for the drops to buy and then get involved and then make some quick flips right and i ended up buying one player yesterday it, like market yesterday was just so flat and there were points where you could buy cards and i was frustrated yesterday because i missed some really good opportunities to make some quick flip trades that are really hard trades to make in all honesty reading the market um I was very disappointed in that because I missed out on those, but it was a really flat market day and it wasn't as, as planned. It wasn't as planned, guys. So the real question going forward is, what is this market going to do today? Honestly, it's going to kind of go either way, guys. And the number one thing going to impact the market today is hype. This market is so controlled and so driven by hype and panic. What people think is coming, what people are expecting to come. Do they need to sell for that? Do they need to buy for that? There is so much that is riding on that in terms of the community sentiment. And right now, it feels like it could go either way. Some cards, like I mentioned, feel pretty expensive. And some of these gold cards that have gone up, I'm sure there's a lot of you guys that are still looking to buy. Maybe a Bon Mati for your team. Maybe a Rafa Leal for your team. Maybe a Hyunmin Son or a... Uh, at Dare Militao, you're still looking to buy for your team. So there's still demand that is out there. But at the same time, what could content be today? Could EA actually release more tradable packs today, dropping the market, bringing that supply in? Or is there going to be a sell-off before squad battle rewards? All those things we kind of have to consider for today. Personally, this is how I'm going to look at it and how I would I would just envision you guys maybe looking at it too. And a mindset to kind of be in frame for today on Saturday is if there's cards that you want to buy a team, I still think that this weekend is going to be a decent opportunity to buy some cards for teams and then see them appreciate and value into this week because this week is such a big week for people to get as good of a team as they can because we got foot champs that is coming next Friday, next Saturday, next Sunday. I already started qualifying for champs. I'm one and one, good start, lost the second game. But a lot of people are going to be playing rivals this week, especially those who just got on the game building up their coin balances through squad battle rewards too and getting those best squads possible because we all know we all know how crazy next weekend is going to be and how important that foot champs is with new the new system and the new rewards so there's going to be team demand this week so the question is how does the market work today i, I think there's going to be some rises i think there's going to be some drops but from content time afterwards it's really going to depend on what SBCs we get, what packs EA put in the store, and then going from there. So I would just say if there's players that you want for your team, just keep an eye on them today. And I think as we get towards squad battle rewards, either before squad battles or after, remember last week how we had that big supply on the market? I think that's going to be a 
kind of crucial time, either a panic sell beforehand, like we had with Rivals on Thursday, and then a bounce, or we have supply at squad battles, which again, remember last week we were like, respect squad battle rewards for all the supply that it can bring. I'm gonna say the same thing again this week. So maybe it's after squad battles this week. Ooh, that's kind of a low price on Japstam. Um, maybe it's after squad battle rewards this week that you actually buy some cards in that low or around there, right? And then you uh, have an opportunity to see those prices rise. So that's kind of what we're watching out for. But really, I'm gonna kind of sit back since the market seems a little uncertain at the moment. There seems to be a lot of demand but also kind of like, I think a lot of people were waiting. We still could have a lot of content that could make prices move. We're not sure what EA is going to do. I think I'm going to be a bit careful with it just for now. Wait and see what happens today towards squad battles. And after that, and then probably get in on some cards for a hopeful rise even further on especially some of these gold cards. Because again, I mean, we look at Mohamed Salah. We're not saying that Salah is going to get back up to 350. He could. Absolutely. Right? Prem meta right wing. But like, in in theory, he's still a little bit lower than what he was there. Again, I'm not saying he's going to get all the way back up there, but we still have some potential room to rise on some of these top tier meta cards. I don't think that you missed the boat if you didn't get in. So we're going to watch the market very close today. We'll be on stream watching it minute by minute, second by second, just seeing how the index moves and how the prices are moving on this game. And of course, reacting to how the content drops today and how that could impact the market. Now, content today on Saturday is looking interesting because and actually you know what i gotta throw this memory back out there if you remember road to the knockouts team won last year the saturday sbc was muhammad kudus and it actually made the market drop a good bit now i'm not saying that because i'm expecting the market to drop to cause panic or anything like that it's a totally different year right yesterday didn't happen like we thought last year um would or in comparison to it we have this sbc that is leaked that could be today could be on sunday but if it's today could be a banger. ASM is leaked as a Road to the Knockouts SBC. We know how good ASM is. We know how meta he is. But it all, of course, leans on the upgrade of the card. This is a predicted stats for sure. This is not official stats. Eve even responded here. FIFA Trading Romania says no, not official stats. This could be crazy, though. ASM is known as a FIFA very meta player. Like, look at those stats, man. Even if it's close to that. Really, what we need to see for an ASM today is... A upgrade that is like the cards in packs or close to it if he's 85 rated 84 rated maybe we would be talking okay we're, we're looking at like 93 pace maybe 90 dribbling and like high 70s shooting and passing we would be there he's already got a play style plus so that gives me hope that this sbc will be better than diogo jota and also i think the french links i know he's in the super league um and he's got the Fenerbahce links, which maybe are, well, they're not as good, maybe even as some of the Saudi links that he did have uh, being in the Saudi league, but he's French and he's Alan St. Maximin. And I would think that would make his SBC a little bit cheaper. So if the card is juiced, he's going to be very meta. And a lot of people are going to do his SBC. And I'm actually worried a little bit about left mid left wings, maybe even gold Doku. A lot of people haven't invested in. If this comes out, that could make some panic happen in that sort of the area of the market, just to be wary of that. But Fenerbahce, in terms of their upgrade path too, that'd be something to consider. They play FC20 later on this week. Then they play United at the end of October. Wow, such a long wait. So that's what kind of what you're looking at here, to get three wins. They won their first win. If they win the next two, they have to beat United. They have to beat AZ Alkmaar. If it's going to be that game, that'd be their third win there. And if they score a goal in each of these three, you're looking for a double upgrade on November 7th. 7th. November 7th would technically be the first time this card could get a double upgrade, two upgrades, which would be seen as a success for a live card with this current upgrade path. That's that's why this upgrade path just takes forever and it's kind of an L, right? But that's kind of what you're looking for with an ASM. It's got to be a card that hits different today with a good stat boost, uh, the playstyle plus of technical, just roll that forward EA and make it a decent price. That could be a banger. Now, other content that we could see today would be evolutions as well. They love dropping the Evos on the weekend. We still have that center attacking mid Evo that's floating around somewhere in the leak world, the leak realm, if you will. Don't know if that's going to drop today, but I would expect an evolution today as well because the weekends have brought us the Evos pretty commonly. And then, of course, we got to think about a mini release. Last year, we had a mini release during Road to the Knockouts. Again, this is a two-team promo, which I want to mention here in a second. This is an official card. Actually, I just noticed this. If you actually go on your PlayStation and click the official news tab, there's like a little video here, and it shows this Julian Brandt uh, in the video. So, like his actual card, and this is the actual card leak that is right there. So, um, 
that's Julian Brandt. Is it a mini release card that will be coming today or tomorrow, Saturday or Sunday? Potentially, could it be in Team 2? That's also something that could be happening as well. And then I want to talk about Team 2 just for a second because maybe you saw these leagues. Paulo Dybala, Garnacho, that's a big one, right? A lot of people are excited for him. Araujo is getting a card. We're getting Malo Gusto getting a card. Barcola is getting a card just after he got a sick Evo. And I think that's it. But those are all cards we expect to be in Team Numero Dos, Team 2, that would be next Friday. Not in packs like any time this weekend. That would be the craziest mini release of all time. That's got to be another team. Of course, this is a two-week promo we do expect. I don't know if that's been confirmed anywhere by EA now that I'm saying that right now. Um, it doesn't say anything about Team 1. I'd have to do some clicking through the menus and double check on that. But um, yeah, we're exp oh yeah, players across two weeks. Yeah, so it does say players across two weeks right there. Boom, confirming two week promo. They didn't say team one anywhere, which usually is our like key to knowing if it's going to be a two week promo. But that right there kind of confirms it. They're in the menu. So that's probably cards are going to be related to team number two. So I wouldn't get your hopes up for those this weekend. Last thing I have to mention again related to the market. Watch the store packs today i think all the ones they added into the code that we looked at yesterday on the video were actually added to the game and again most of those packs or all of those were untradeable so if they're going to be adding in a tradable pack today they either have to be new pack code or maybe a pack that's already in the game like a 50k pack or a 100k pack they could just easily add into the store and i'm hoping to be able to make some more market moves today man we're really close to a million coins we're at 978 that cherokee was really good to use in game he was so fun and uh, yeah, just trading with the rare stuff today, guys, is what I'm going to be doing. One thing I will mention, too, if you're wanting to grind the market today on a Saturday, trade low budget. I know that guys like Timo Werner, Laminia Mall, they're down. Uh, Javi Simons is down a bit. That's kind of an Evo investment. But Kolomani, Nuno Menj, Akanji, these players, people are buying for their teams like crazy. I bet you can lazy sell them very well. Like get them on low bids, list them up for a thousand, maybe fifteen, maybe two thousand coins over what their lowest buy it now price is on the market. And I think you will get some sales decently consistently because you have a lot of people looking to buy those cards. And once again, just double check the average sell price. Um Harry Cool shows us 146,000 coins. Like, I don't know if people look at this and list there, but he's a 300 k card. Average price showing at 146. So this new system that they've already added is showing some problems too. Uh, Adiemi at 105, that's accurate. Uh, 58K for Dudek, I think that's actually a little bit low. DeMarco 152, that's pretty accurate. Anyways, that's sort of the things you're looking for if you're looking to uh, list for lazies on the market. Look for some of those cheaper cards to be listing up, of course, too. So that's enough yapping from me, but hopefully EA drop us a banger SBC. If it's ASM, we will be there. If it's somebody else, maybe it'll be good too. But fingers crossed for ASM and fingers crossed for a little bit of a market dip today. I know a lot of us are kind of looking for, you know, just that not even a 10% dip, but a 5% dip. VVD goes from 330 back to like 315 or something like that before squad battle rewards. Or well, at least he was 330. What is he now? Okay, he's still 330, 340. Let's say he goes back to like 315, 310. Boom. That's a way better entry point, it feels like, than 340, at least before squad battle. So we're going to be watching the market very heavy today once again. And if you want to see us struggle yesterday and actually get a couple of decent pack pulls for the main squad, make sure you check out the second video, the RTG second channel video over there. But yeah, guys, have a great Saturday. Enjoy the footy games that are going to be going on today. And I will see you guys in the Twitch stream later today. That link is down below in the description. I will catch you guys there. It's been Nate for the Peace out. <laughs>